Hello, Northlanders. It's Tuesday, September 5th. I'm Barrett Chase with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. A felon who turned in a gun that he said he found in his deceased brother's car pleaded guilty last week to illegally possessing the weapon, choosing not to fight his case before a jury. Stephen Allen Cooper, 31, entered the plea of a count of felon in possession of a firearm at a Zoom hearing in state district court. The former Duluth man had been scheduled to go to trial at the Duluth courthouse on September 12th. The charge carries a guideline prison term with a statutory minimum of five years, though Cooper will be free to argue for a departure to probation. The St. Louis County Attorney's Office is not bound by any recommendations at sentencing. Cooper's case had become a cause for activists, including the Duluth branch of the NAACP, which held a news conference with the defendant on the steps of the St. Louis County Courthouse in April and again joined him for a court appearance in May. But St. Louis County prosecutors repeatedly refused to bow to public pressure, stressing the need for a thorough investigation before making any decisions in a case involving a serious public concern by a man previously convicted of a violent offense. Cooper, now living in the Twin Cities, spent 13 and a half years in prison after pleading guilty to two counts of attempted premeditated first-degree murder for shooting two employees in their backs during a robbery at the Interstate Spur at 2700 West Michigan Street on November 6, 2006, just days before his 15th birthday. He was on supervised release, often called parole, when he said he found the Glock 9mm pistol in an SUV that belonged to his brother. Describing himself as distraught over his brother's death, he said he tried to do the right thing by turning it in rather than an alternative, such as giving it to another person or disposing of it in a river. The Arrowhead Regional Corrections agent arrived and took possession of the gun, but also called 911. Cooper was placed in the back of a squad car with body camera footage capturing an officer telling him he did the right thing by turning it in, but suggesting Cooper had to know he could not touch the weapon. As a convicted felon, Cooper is prohibited from possessing any firearms or ammunition. Aside from new charges, violations can also result in a revocation of supervised release, though the Department of Corrections opted against sending Cooper back to prison. Authorities noted that Cooper's brother died in April 2022, some three months before the incident. At a Thursday hearing, St. Louis County Prosecutor Tony Rubin indicated he was offering Cooper a settlement that would include an admission that the defendant was not truthful with law enforcement or his community supporters about his actions. In exchange, the office would have joined in a recommendation that Cooper be granted a probationary sentence. But after the hearing was continued to Friday, Rubin said Cooper entered a plea solely to the elements of the crime, essentially a straight plea that would still allow the prosecution to argue for prison time. Judge Dale Harris ordered a background investigation and scheduled sentencing for October 27th at the Duluth Courthouse. For 150 years, Duluth Bethel has adapted to the needs of the community. That century and a half of history will be celebrated through seven original songs debuting at a free concert at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday in the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center's Symphony Hall. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. It's part of a two-night concert series to recognize 150 years of Bethel and celebrate mental health and recovery from substance abuse disorders. Beginning at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, Tony Watruba will perform at Bayfront Festival Park, followed by the Mick Sterling Tribute Show at 8.30 p.m. Bayfront Gates open at 5.30 p.m. The original songs, written by Cheryl Leah and her partner Ed Willett, will be performed Tuesday evening by the Blue Canvas Orchestra. The two were commissioned by Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua and Executive Director Dennis Cummings to write the music and drew inspiration from Bethel archival material. Throughout the 45-minute show, old images will be projected onto a screen showing Bethel and the people it served over the years. 
This is the third annual Concert for Recovery hosted by Bethel, and since Wednesday marks 150 years since it was incorporated, Cummings said he wanted to do something special this year. Cummings, a longtime fan of Big Top, a Bayfield-based music and education nonprofit, found they were the right group to help tell Bethel's story. Now here's Dan Williamson with a special guest. Thanks, Barrett. I'm joined by one of our colleagues, Duluth News Tribune arts and entertainment reporter, Jay Gabler. And Jay has a story that he's working on for Wednesday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune. It's also a story that you can find on our website prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com. And Jay, you were telling me this is a story about a voice actor that lives in Duluth. Yes, I got to meet Melissa Medina, who is a voice actor who is based out of a home in Duluth's Lincoln Park neighborhood with this gorgeous view of the St. Louis River estuary. And there, they voice characters from a ton of different video games, commercials, animated TV shows. They've got this super cool little studio set up with sound baffling and it's really you know beautifully decorated and lit and they just sit there and they pull a sound insulating curtain and just become all sorts of different characters that people around the world hear when they play video games or watch commercials or even watch tv fascinating what was your biggest takeaway from this story it was cool first of all to learn what the life of a voice actor is like that you know Melissa wakes up in the morning and goes downstairs and opens email and looks and sees what auditions might have come up. And so they'll record some sample voices to potentially audition for roles and they'll do recording sessions and often a director because, you know, voice acting has directors just like in-person acting does. A director will sometimes zoom in via video conference to help sort of lead the recording session. And that's just, you know, they spend all day in Duluth recording these amazing voice roles for all sorts of different characters and occasionally do travel out of town, for example, to L.A. when project is under such tight wraps that the producers can't even put a script into email, that that's too much of a security risk just to put something out there on the Internet. It's like that secret. So sometimes Melissa will fly into L.A. to record bits for that. But it was neat to learn about their life and their work right here in Duluth. Very interesting. What do you hope our audience takes away from your story? I hope people who read this article, if they live here in Duluth or the Northland, gain a new appreciation for the fact that they're living in a place where people live even when they could choose to live anywhere. Melissa could be doing their work anywhere in the world, but you know, after growing up in Texas and living in Seattle for a while, they came looking for a new place to call home, a new community, and they found first Minnesota, lived in St. Paul for a while, then came to visit Duluth and decided, I love this place. I never want to leave. So Melissa bought a house up here and got set up and admitted to me that there is some in-person networking and preference that does make it easier in the industry if you live in LA, even if you're a voice actor who might be working from your own home studio. But they said, well, you know, the upside is, you know, just look, you can live here in this beautiful area and you're not spending the millions and millions of dollars you'd need to have a home like that in Los Angeles. And they said the people here have just been super welcoming. They've found a great community. And so it was just so pleased to learn that this super talented voice actor calls the Zenith City home. Looking forward to reading this article. Again, you can find it in Wednesday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune. You can also find it online prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Jay, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Dan. Barrett, back to you. Thanks, Dan and Jay. Now here's a look at your forecast brought to you by the Superior Telegrams podcast, Archive Dive. Good morning. This forecast for the greater Duluth area, a chance of uh, showers and thunderstorms developing with a possibility of a few severe storms late this afternoon in through the early part of tonight. High today getting up to around the upper 80s with some lower 90s in northern Wisconsin. Scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow night coming to an end overnight. Temps dropping back down into the upper 50s, then much cooler with scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm on Wednesday with a high only in the low to mid 60s, much cooler weather for the rest of the week. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to Archive Dive for their support. The monthly history podcast, hosted by Superior Telegram reporter Maria Lockwood, dips into the archives of historic events, people, and places around Superior and Douglas County. Available at superiortelegram.com or wherever you also get this podcast. 
The latest episode is part one of a two-part series looking back at the life of Bud Grant. Reporting for today's episode was done by Tom Olson, Jimmy Lovren, and Jay Gabler. Thank you for listening to the Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.